All right. In this video, we're going to go through some of the backstory and in the new book, uh, Hero Villain, Satoshi, the man who the man who built Bitcoin by Mark Eggington, Ellington. And uh, looking forward to kind of like, really show you some of the insides of some of the couple of chapters here that are really uh, compelling. And um, and so the backstory goes like this is that uh, this guy, Mark, it uh, looks like he was brought in to meet with Calvin Air in in London in 2022, it was April 2022. So there's a, it's dated. I like the fact that it's dated right at the beginning. And he goes into a, uh, he goes into a, what was supposed to be a business meeting initially to discuss uh, these types of ideas about a possible book and ends up being coming, not a business meeting, but Calvin, Calvin's, one of his assistants calls Mark and says, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna change it to Calvin's apartment in London and it becomes a party. So he arrives and there's, you know, there's dance music playing and there's food out, there's drinks, uh, drink serving and there's waitresses, and cocktail, you know, cocktail servers. And Calvin finally comes out and Calvin's having a good time dancing. And, you know, so he's, he has some back and forth and a nice little informal, you know, informal interaction with, uh, with Calvin at this time. And he's doing, the book does a great job at like describing the room and, and, and seeing exactly, Calvin's wearing a, a kilt. And apparently Calvin Air was a, has Scottish heritage. So he, like Mark, uh, is also Scottish. He's from Scotland. And so the, uh, you know, they have this, this little bit of a, they have this little connection. He's got this, this, the kilt going on and, and it, it, it's a cool description of the opening chapter here. And then, uh, you know, after that it goes, it goes directly into a, a, a an abrupt departure. He's got a train to catch back to Scotland. He's got to catch on the, one of the London tubes. So he barely makes, makes his train. He rushes out of there, you know, and, and bolts, bolts through London traffic out of a taxi and then gets out of the thing and barely gets on. All of a sudden he's sitting on the train and, and barely, you know, barely gets back in time. He gets an email back from Calvin. Hey, so are we on for the, are you inter still interested in the book deal? And he's like, you know, he probably revised, you know, that he is, but he's got a lot of backstory that he's got to develop. And he wants to get both sides of the story, you know? So, and I'm not giving away all, all, all the whole books. I haven't read it yet, but uh, I'm just giving the backstory here. So the, uh, he, he really, he's trying to, he's really showing that I want to, I want to give, get both sides. Cause there's this, he talks about how, Calvin said he would introduce him to Dr. Wright, uh, to Craig Wright. So he's like, yeah, they set up another meeting. This time it's a business meeting. And at the business meeting, it's a boardroom, you know, boardroom table. And he's got Stefan Matthews there. And then Calvin Air comes down. And this time it's not, it's not in a kilt. It's a business, more of a business. Uh, it's like, it's a white linen shirt. And he's got some of his executives there. And Stephen Matthews, he describes as very welcoming, easy, easy to be around. And then Calvin, he describes in the book as more, uh, more serious, focused in the business meeting, very dry in business and going after his, uh, his target here. So it was, he's then invited to go to an after, uh, like a social party, he gets an invitation to go to a social party plus one at a place in London. And he's going to meet apparently going to meet Dr. Wright. No, he, but Dr. Wright was going to show up at this business meeting, but his flight was delayed. He missed his flight coming back from, I think it was Malaysia. And so he's, uh, he's describing that. And he has this meeting with with Calvin and, and Steph and Matthews instead. Anyways, then he gets invited to the social party gathering and he's describing uh, the situation there. So really beautiful, beautiful visuals on this. And it was, it was the, uh, he arrives and I pictured a, I pictured a, like a kind of a, a nightclub environment with a, with a, a nightclub environment, like with a real luxury and with Calvin air having a, having a VIP area. And then he arrives there and Calvin comes up and whispers and said, Hey, Craig Wright's going to be here. It's like, Oh, you'll get to meet him. So at some point during the evening, like he describes it like a like a vapor that appears under under the door room, and, and it's funny because I can relate to this. That literally, there's Craig right over there in the in the in the other side of the room. I relate to this because this happened not only in Dubai when I saw Doctor Wright, but also in in London. He literally just appeared, and all of a sudden in Dubai, there was like a huge huge crowd of people around him.
swarmed him for pictures and I it was just a massive entourage and then in London when I was when I this is 2023 he just appeared I think he was by himself and he goes over to the uh, coffee bar and gets a cup of coffee you know by himself and blends into the crowd and nobody even noticed he was there <laughs> so I saw him and I took a picture with with myself and Zem Gao and and it was a yeah, so anyways, back to the story. Wright appears like a, like a vapor under the door, just out of nowhere. And then he has a really dry conversation with, uh, with the author and wasn't too impressive at that point. But now some of the backstory about Bitcoin in the early days, you know, he's going into a in the next chapter, which was about, he's actually having this, now, now having more of, an in, more of a meeting with Dr. Wright at Enchain. And... The starting point of Bitcoin, as Dr. Wright's explaining to him, was, was long before 2008. And Wright had been open about saying that Tim May's Blacknet was an inspiration for, it was an inspiration uh, for him in the same way that Adam Back's Hashcat and D-Money was. May's Blacknet, however, was the beginning of everything for him. And check this out. So it, it goes into Blacknet is, is nominally non di Didological, but considers nation states, export laws, patent laws, and national security considerations and the like to be relics of pre-cyberspace era. Export, pat, export and patent laws often use the used to be explicitly project national power, project national power, an imperial colonial state of fascism. Blacknet believes it is solely the responsibility of a secret holder to keep that secret, not the responsibility of the state or us. So it's compelling, I never knew this about Blacknet, that it was a, it believed that it was a, that these things like export laws and nation states and patent laws, national security considerations are relics of the pre-cyberspace -cyber, era. And apparently May's Blacknet was the beginning of everything for Dr. Wright, the claiming this book. So another compelling point was this email here, and it talks about how frustrated, so Dr. Wright's trying to, uh, he basically has 70, he's saying he's got 70 pages written, 80 pages written about the white paper. Where the hell are those, I, 80 pages? This is all new information. I never even knew it. 80 pages written. Uh, I don't remember that coming up in the trial. So he has 80 pages written, 70 or 80 on the white paper, and he contacts his old buddy, Dave Kleiman, and Dave Kleiman, he's described in this book, as a, you know, as a bury and uh, as a, as a bury burly army veteran from Florida, and he was with a, as an alpha male who loved big trucks, contact sports, and hard hard living. Yet somehow these two men, separated by thousands of miles, became fast friends online. Climbing sat on the computer most of the days after a motor motorcycle accident in 1995 when he was just 28 years old, which can permanently combined him to a wheelchair. Having been an active, good-time guy who enjoyed outdoors, Kleiman was forced to be to focus attention elsewhere, and and so and elsewhere uh, reputably en encompassed drugs, online gambling, and his own computer company called Computer Forensics LLC. So here's a quote from the book: It says, "Quote: I have a vague memory of of the white paper. I think that now this is from Lynn Wright. I think it." I, I proffered part of it, but to be honest, whenever I read wh whatever I read it from my, uh, the context, my eyes just glazed, glazed over. Lynn Wright remembers. Frustrated, right? Back to the, uh, back a little bit. Embodied by the initial success of his MVP, minimum valuable product, product, product essentially a prototype of Bitcoin to test whether the code would work in a domestic setting. Once I knew I could, quote, once I knew I could work, it could work at scale. I knew it was worth taking the idea, the, the idea further, Wright says. Once I, um, imba uh, let's see. The first version of what would become the Bitcoin, oh, so he says this. Wright started documenting in a combination of handwritten notes and dragon voice type software, the first version of what would become the Bitcoin white paper. I started writing in August of 2007, Wright says. I'd write some of it and I'd come back. I took it, it took till March of 2008 to get the full 80 pages. 
So frustrated, Wright contacted his American friend, Dave Kleiman, on March 12, 2008, with a request in an email, and he wrote, quote, I need your help editing a paper I'm going to release later this year. I've been working on a new form of electronic money, Bitcash, Bitcoin, dot, dot, dot. You are always there for me, Dave. I want you to be a part of it all. I can't release it as me, GMX, Vistamail, and Tor. I need your help, and I need a version of me to make this work that is better than me, Craig. So it's assumed that Kleiman, seemingly a more gifted writer than Wright, fulfilled his friend's request by polishing up the white paper into something more consistent with the version that exists today. He had been, a, uh, he had been cryptically pre-warned that his help would be required in an email from Wright at the end of, of December 2007. That read... Nothing now, but I want your help with something big soon. So he'd already been warned by Dr. Wright, is what, what this book is claiming. And, and Kleiman, as always, was there for his Australian friend. So as such, before long, the paper had gone from 80-page diatribe of, Craig's workings, of, of the workings of Craig Wright's mind, vomited onto a page to a streamlined document ready to change the world, to... To the knowledge of anyone, to the best of anyone's knowledge, Kleiman's edit was his only involvement in the Bitcoin white paper. And by that extension, the creation of Bitcoin. But it was a very vital step. By, by June 2008, after some back and forth with Kleiman, Wright had a solid idea to go, go to battle with. The following month, he walked into Stephen Matthews' office at Centurbet and handed him a USB stick. And at that point, that's the point where he goes into talking about how Stephen Matthews reads the, uh, he ends up reading the, the white paper. He actually printed it off, is the claim. And this, this was the testimony in court. He read the white paper, or at least he scanned through the white paper. And he says uh, that he remembers reading that it had Craig Wright's name on the top of it, not Satoshi Nakamoto. And that's part of the, part of the book and where this comes out. And this was written, obviously, before the trial. Uh, it was definitely, apparently, I think it was written before the trial. It wasn't published. I didn't get it till recently, so I'd have to actually know exactly the date. It was, it was finally sealed and published. Mark would have to tell us that. But yeah, so that was uh, really compelling stuff. The next chapter, it's going into Genesis, and it's talking about like the backstory about what's happening there. And, you know, I mean, I just pinch myself because uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be even a part of this. Uh, it's like this perfect blend of of having the knowledge, the experience, the insight, the desire, and the need, okay, for this new, completely new digital economy, peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, where data is the new oil, like uh, Mitch talked about on my Sunday interview with him, you know, where data is the new oil. It's, it's I'm grateful for the opportunity to even be on this path and seeing the, being able to see that vision ahead of time early enough uh, to be a part of this, this giant tidal wave, you know, that's coming. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm honored and grateful for that. And really uh, it's exciting because it's a beautiful future with this, you know, when you're, when you really start to see how this, uh, you know, how the plumbing of the internet is going to be working and blending with, with Bitcoin and the, you know, IPv6, which I did reach out to uh, one of the guys at IPv6, that may be coming. Um, the guy was actually from the IRS, formerly. Pretty cool story. I haven't heard back from him yet. So, anyways, the uh, but yeah, with the whole blending of the internet with IBV6 and Bitcoin and this data uh, infrastructure, and then of course just the peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, casual payments online, that are that are now coming into fruition, and then being a part of this simple backstory for this great, you know, monumental invention. I mean, the the greatest. Uh, the greatest modern day invention te uh, technologically of our time. Not, not I mean, a world changing uh, technology that has completely changed the world to make this two, two trillion dollar Ponzi scheme that's, that we have now going on in uh, cryptocurrency. So, hey, you know, it's pretty uh, phenomenal. I'm just grateful to be a part of it. And hopefully I could shed some light on this book. Shout out to the author and uh, the guys in the book. All right, this is Gavin Mail. Be sure to like the video, subscribe, share the video wherever you're seeing this. It's important to share the video and get the word out there, all right? I'll see you at the top.